Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors coming to you with Rebound Relationship Special Topics. This is part of my Life Rebound and Recovery series where I explore uh, particular trending topics and also just everyday relationship topics. Uh, take some time to listen to this audio discussion, maybe gain some insight. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I will respond. Also, um, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification button if you're interested in further topics. Uh, this is Rebound Relationship Special Topics. Thank you very much for visiting the channel. So usually when you hold down a cheater, you will ride and die with ignorance. You like the not knowing. You know, maybe uh, in the beginning, at the beginning of your relationship, because you wanted the relationship to work, you wanted to know everything. You wanted to know if you guys were going to turn into something more than just a booty call or if you were going to turn into something more than uh, a friend, right? If 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 you if either of you were going to call each other a title or update upgrade the relationship, but then when you when you find out the individual just cheats and cheats and cheats, that and then you confront confront confront, and the person still decides to continue to continue to continue. Then you get into one of those sighs, you know, that that you're giving up. It's like breath is leaving you. And it's hard for you to to sort of reconcile while the while the person is continuing to cheat. You know, you have some of these mothers, these uh wives rather whose husbands have been cheating since the honeymoon, probably probably before that. And every weekend he goes and spends time with his mistress. He has a house for her. He gives her a bank account, right? You're the main wife. You're the core wife, the core relationship. But he also makes time for that other relationship um, that... Uh, he, he seems to give more value. And so you, you begin to operate in this not knowing because it's much more convenient than to fight. You can't really leave because you don't really have anything going for yourself or you never put yourself first to go to school or do something else for yourself. Some of these wives have been out of work They've been a housewife, uh, completely dependent upon their husbands. So to leave would mean they would have to downgrade their lifestyle. And what if you are in these types of, uh, you know, suburban neighborhoods where the husband is a CEO of a company or something like that, and everybody knows you, and you guys go to all these parties and, and things like that, and... Um, it's hard to break up during that time. It's it, it's it's hard to give up the relationship because you give up all of the perks and benefits and advantages that that are inherent in that relationship. So you walk about with an ignorance, with a not knowing, and this is this this is you purposely doing it, even if you know what the uh, issue really is. You are purposely actually um, not knowing. So using the not know to stay is much because if you don't say anything about it then you get to keep your position as wife but if you do say something about it it is nothing for a man to kick his wife out of a house and bring in his mistress men do it all the time uh when you hold down a cheater you will ride and die with incompetence so living with a person who refuses progress i noticed the the ex that i was with you know he had all these dreams in his heart but he had no real um he had no real courage to put anything into action now he will he would sit down at the desk and write out the things that he was trying to do but it takes much more knowledge to figure out how to get there. For instance, 
he wanted uh to uh to act in films right so then you ask yourself why aren't you enrolling in an acting workshop okay he wanted to to do some modeling right so then you ask yourself why aren't you getting headshots okay he wanted to um uh write a play okay then why aren't you studying uh, uh plays already film scripts to know how to format and that's what i'm saying that he would have rather stayed in incompetence meaning that he was not competent enough to pursue the dream see all of us have dreams in our heart right but the way that we pursue those dreams is by becoming a student of what we want to later what we want to later uh master or govern over so if you don't know something about the field to which you want to have an have an impact then your goal is to pick up a book and read that's what you do see cheating is skipping steps is cheating is accumulating something that you haven't actually earned right it's it's trying to skip steps it's being hasty it's trying to get somewhere before your time but everyone needs to become a student of the thing that they are trying to accomplish so it's much easier to just hold down a cheater knowing that he is sort of um purposely stupid right purposely stupid because he refuses progress you know think about uh the platoon leader of his platoon giving out a command forward march well if they march forward then they progress literally they move forward until the command is to uh on um, to the platoon leader tells them to stop they move forward but if they stay in their place and don't march forward they won't move forward knowledge helps you to move forward because it's is like the platoon leader it's instruction it's guidance it's direction it's learning and so um it's wisdom um which is the application of knowledge so uh if the person is not willing to learn something to move forward he or she would never move forward and even if they have a, some sort of little success somewhere you know they're gonna always stay stuck somewhere i don't know what it is for each person but you have to put forth some effort to move yourself forward now there's a lot of preparation that you have to do people think that that just because they have a dream or they want to go after something that that just because they think it it can become so in an hour that's not how how dream preparation works you have to actually uh work out the ideas keep a journal learn from mistakes receive constructive criticism uh continue to reflect make changes revise right but when you are holding down a cheater it's affecting your progress in learning and it is affecting that person's progress in learning because they are offended that you are moving even if the person is holding you back with their issues you still have a heart to move well that offends them the problem with that situation is that you continue to hold down the cheater in that because then it's going to set you back set you back set you back every time he gets involved with someone okay that sets you back emotionally and psycho um, um psychologically every time he purposely loses his job that sets you back financially every time he um um refuses to to be the man that you know he can be to you that sets you back mentally so it's so many different ways that you can refuse progress and the negative consequences that result so when you hold down a che cheater you tend to live with a person who refuses progress when you hold down a cheater you will ride and die with um with disrespect so it's it's like you cultivating the belief system and this is a hard one this slide is a hard one because it's a it is going to be offensive 
Uh, the reason being, if you look at the domestic, the domestic violence um, context, right? Two, two partners together living in a house or in relationship and they are, one partner is hitting the other, right? And then the other partner is either resisting or crying or um, just struggling with the relationship. The very first time the person hit you and you didn't kick that person out or divorce that person, you accepted it, okay? That began that belief system. You have a belief system, he has a belief system, but then there's a belief system of the house, the context of the relationship. And as soon as the person hit you and you fell down to the ground and you did not fight or throw something at them or you let them come back or something like that, you agreed with it. Now, sure, he'll come back and try to create a counter argument. The counter argument, uh, the counter argument being, oh, I'm sorry, I love you, I want to stay together. Okay, you accept the counter argument, you, you accept the flowers, you accept uh, everything that goes with that I'm sorry, but then in just a matter of days, he hits you again. Uh, he hits you again. When you accepted him back, uh, you agreed with that counter argument, but then when he hit you again, that was a rebuttal. That he was going, and a rebuttal is to prove something that is false. So that particular thing that he did in hitting and in, in saying, I'm sorry, that's really false for him. That the rebuttal both proves something that is false and also sustains the original argument. And the original argument was in hitting you and sustaining that argument throughout the relationship and you accepting it. So when you hold down a cheater, you are cultivating and accepting and validating a belief system. Though he has a belief system and the belief system is this is who I am and this is what I'm gonna do. And so you're just gonna have to accept it. And you have to really think about that. Are you going to truly accept it? Because if you decide to accept it, you have accepted not only his claim, uh, his counter argument and his rebuttal. You don't really have a counterclaim because you didn't hit him. So basically, it's, it's his whole argument and in, in, um, overall. And the reason why I'm talking like claim, counterclaim, evidence, and rebuttal is because um, I teach composition. And, you know, it's something that I teach my students. And so if you look at life as an argument and you look at how opposing, um, opposing people always try to challenge your argument, Either you're going to to accept their counter argument about you, or 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 you're going to give them a, a rebuttal to sustain your argument. So, you know, kind of look at life like that. So if you if you hold down the cheater, you are um, riding and dying with with disrespect, and you are you are the main sort of fertilizer then for for uh, for cultivating that belief system because he's sown the seed the seed isn't hitting you and once you accepted that seed into your soil it's time for him to cultivate it as well as you because as long as you stay you are cultivating that belief system so when you uh, hold down a cheater you will ride and die with mediocrity so that means you um failing to develop yourself. And that, that goes back to the platoon leader, you know, that, you know, the more that you hang out with a person who, who doesn't have any purpose, doesn't uh, believe in action with dreams to, to, to go after their dreams, uh, and just basically want to be rich in life, but, but without any effort, you are accepting their mediocrity. They're simple. They don't want to do anything else. They only want to go and their only dream is to become rich. And so they will attach to you to become rich, whatever you got. And that's another thing when you hold down a cheater, you can hold down somebody too long to the point that if you got money and y'all are married or live in situation under common law, uh, he might get has. 
If you win something, he might get half of that. And so here it is. You're holding down a cheater uh, who is mediocre at best and won't develop himself. And then as a result of being exposed to him, you have become mediocre and you won't develop your own self because you're so busy trying to keep up with him. You're trying to look at the phone, see who's calling, how many pics he got, who, who he's talking to. You know, I did all of that and it just bothered me and it just, I couldn't sleep at night, you know, I couldn't go to sleep. And, and then I got angry and mad that he was even in the bed with me. And I, and I was, uh, putting up with that. And long time ago, I would have never put up with that kind of thing. I mean, I wasn't, uh, right, uh, right where I, where I needed to be back in my time, but I was going after something now. I was going after college. I completed college. I was going after, uh, planning for a business, which I'm still doing now. So I was, I was putting action. I was doing something, but it, you, you can, you can do a lot of different things, but lack development too, because development takes time. It takes reflection. It takes process. It takes learning from your mistakes. And, and as long as you are in the context of holding down a cheater, you're not really learning. Sometimes you got to take yourself out of that situation so you can see it for what it really is. All right, so here's the last one. Uh, when you hold down a cheater, you will ride and die with a fixed mindset. So that means you avoid challenges or risks. You know, in the domestic violence situation, um, sure, it is very hard to challenge someone who's hitting you, who's cussing you out, right? But you also develop a fixed mindset where you don't think you can change the situation too. And that you have people who have stayed in relationships 10, 15, 20 years still undergoing abuse. And then eventually that person just kills them, right? So you will ride and die with a fixed mindset. The longer you stay in the relationship with the person who doesn't want to develop themselves, you end up uh, uh, cultivating also a fixed mindset and you end up agreeing with their fixed mindset. So then you just stop challenging. You stop risking because every time you confront the relationship, there's some something, you know, uh, and then the longer you stay in something, um, non-abusive in a sense of physical, the more you start to sympathize and, and, and feel for the person and, uh, want to love them and be there for them, for them and help them. Why do you think Tina Turner stayed in that relationship with Ike Turner? She stayed in it because she remembered her mother abandoning her. And she said she didn't want to do that to Ike in the movie. What's love got to do with it, right? And so she sympathized. She saw something in him that might have, re might have been reflected in her and she wanted to be there for him. And, uh, and and it's almost like taking on a motherly role. Well, then when you are holding down a cheater, it's like taking on a motherly role. And, and the more you, you baby that individual, the more you speak weakness into that individual to the point that person is never going to change. That can be male or female. So... You want to be careful about adopting a fixed mindset because with a fixed mindset, you avoid challenges. You avoid risks. With its opposite, a growth mindset, you are willing to take constructive criticism. You are willing to endure challenges and risks because you know on the other end, on the other side of that is growth. So that's what I want to leave you with. All right, so hopefully you were able to gain insight from this video discussion. Please like, subscribe, and visit. So uh, please like the video, hit hit the notification bell for more discussions. I am re-uploading all of my audios, uh, so I, I needed to make some changes to them. Uh, you can visit my, web, my website for more content at reginawhyfavors.com. If you want to send me an email, you can send an email 
reginawhyfavors at yahoo.com. Please also purchase the book. It's going to come out in spring 2021. So I had to make changes um, to my book to update it. And I also updated updated the title. So the original title was Bait, Hook, and Switch, Confessions of a Rebound Girl. And I have updated the title to Toxic Encounters, Why People Pursue Rebound Relationships. So right now I'm still basically editing it and I want to make it available in spring 2021. So thank you very much for visiting my channel and I am Regina Y. Favors. Have a great day.